Hi Mole Class, welcome to another episode of Slime. We are now up to chapter 13, Clockwork Robot. Okay, it goes quite quickly. Some time ago, Ned had fallen in love with a very special toy in Envy's Emporium. A toy his mum and dad could never afford to buy him. Ned's parents were humble people and they worked from dawn until dusk just to put food on the table. The toy was a clockwork robot, metal and boxy with lights and whirring noises, just as a clockwork robot should be. The boy had seen it on display in the window of the twins' shop, and he would stop by on his way home from school each night to gaze at it. It was perfect. Ned knew this clockwork robot would be much more than just a toy. It would be a friend. The boy and his robot would have adventures together. They would fly spaceships, battle alien armies, visit distant planets and still be home in time for tea. As Ned would daydream, Edmund and Edmond would spy him staring through their window and charge out the shop. Be gone, child! Edmund would shout. Wretched boy! Edmond would agree. I was only looking, Ned would protest. Stop wearing our precious toys out with your eyes! If you aren't going to purchase said toy, then shoo! Never darken our door again! Then the horrid pair would retreat into their shop and slam the door. Bang! A sign on the door read, Only one child at a time. Children are vile, thieving rats. Years, months and weeks passed. Eventually, Ned had saved up enough of his pocket money to buy the robot for himself. So one Saturday morning, he wheeled himself inside the shop. Dring! went the bell on the door. Strangely, the shop was completely empty. Hello, he called out. Hello, but there was no answer. With trepidation, Ned picked up the clockwork robot from the window and took it over to the till. Still, the boy couldn't see anyone. Then, boo! The twins leaped up from behind the counter. Edmund had some joke shop fangs in his mouth and was pulling a vampire face. Meanwhile, Edmund had sharp claws on his fingers and was pulling a werewolf face. The pair loved frightening children. A startled Ned rolled back in his wheelchair. Trundle! Why did you do that? he spluttered. Happy Halloween! the twins chimed in together. Ned thought for a moment. It's not Halloween for another six months. It's Halloween every day in Envy's Emporium, said Edmond. We don't need a special day to scare children agreed Edmund. The twins looked down at the clockwork robot the boy was holding in his hands. So you finally saved up all your precious little pennies, have you? remarked Edmond with a look of pity on his face. Yes, replied the boy. He took out his piggy bank from next to him on his battered old wheelchair. The piggy bank was indeed full of pennies. Ned received just a penny a week poc of pocket money. It was all his parents could afford. But the boy had saved and saved and saved and then saved some more. The night before, Ned had counted all the pennies and realised, to his delight, he had just enough to buy the robot. The twins snatched the piggy bank and shook out the coins onto the counter. Ding, ding, ding! The evil old pair bristled as they realised they would have to count every single one. There must have been hundreds and hundreds of coins. Then Ned noticed Edmund whispering in Edmund's, Edmond's ear before the pair shared a secret smile. I will go and fetch the bag, purred Edmond. You do that, Edmund, replied Edmund. No, you're Edmund. Am I? asked Edmund. Yes, I am Edmond. Are you sure? Quite sure. I thought it was the other way round. No, definitely not. Oh, said Edmund. The twin was most befuddled. Well, you do that, Edmond. Thank you, Edmond, replied Edmund, before realising his mistake. Don't, oh, you've got me doing it now. The boy looked on in disbelief. The envied twins were crackers. Edmond tipped, over, tipped off as Edmund began counting the coins on the counter. One P, two P, three P. Ned looked down at the clockwork robot he was cradling in his hands. At last, this fantastic toy, which he'd coveted for so many years, was going to be his. 4p, 5p, 6p. Boom! There was a deafening explosion right next to the boy's ear. Horror upon horror, Ned dropped the clockwork robot to the floor. Clank! It smashed into pieces. Clatter! 
In tears, Ned leaned over in his wheelchair to collect them all up, but it was no use. The robot was destroyed. Still, Edmund counted. 7p, 8p, 9p. Hunched over, the boy could feel someone looming behind him and turned round. It was Edmond. The twin was holding what was left of a brown paper bag that he had burst. Oops, remarked Edmond. Oops, indeed, agreed Edmund. The nasty little runt has broken our toy. All children are vile, especially this little bandle. All breakages must be paid in full. But, 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 pleaded Ned, it wasn't my fault. Oh, yes, it was. You gave me a fright. What fright? asked Edmond, mocking innocently. I didn't hear anything, lied Edmund. I am going, announced Ned. The boy made a grab for the pennies all spread out on the counter, but Edmund whisked them away just in time. They're mine, pleaded the boy. You didn't listen, snarled Edmond. All breakages must be paid for in full, repeated Edmund. But no buts, boy. Now be gone. With a heavy heart, the boy turned his wheelchair and rolled himself out of Envy's emporium. Just as Ned reached the door, he turned back to see the evil pair collapse in hoots of laughter. We got him! We got him good and proper! When all this happened, Ned had felt helpless to do anything. Today, he had the power to right this wrong. And so many others. Chapter 14. The Most Revolting Toys in the World A hot air balloon made of slime landed on the dew-dusted roof of Envy's emporium. Splat! Tring! The bell chirped as the door to the toy shop opened. Sitting on the roof, Ned could see the top of a little girl's head rushing out. A frizzy-haired child was in floods of tears, clutching a headless dolly. Boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, she cried. A slate came loose on the roof and fell to the ground. Crunch! The frizzy-haired girl looked up. Ned! Shh! Shush, Ned. The girl wiped her eyes and nodded before running home. As she disappeared from view, the Envy twins stepped out of their shop. Ha ha ha, they laughed. Another satisfied customer, Edmund, chirped one. No, we've been through this a million times, snapped the other. You are Edmund. Am I? Yes. Well, who's Edmund then? Me. Are you sure? Get inside, Edmund. Who's that? You. With that, the pair scrambled back into their shop. They both tried to go through the door at the same time and became stuck for a moment. Dring! Still hiding up on the roof, the boy whispered to his friend, When you hear me shout Slime, I want you to come down the chimney. Slime? asked Slime, who had gone back to being a blob. Yes, Slime. So now? No, when I say Slime. You just said it again. I mean when I say it next. What? Slime. Now? No, and keep your voice down. They might hear us, hissed Ned. Listen out for the magic word. There's a magic word as well. Slime was becoming mightily confused. No, no, no. Slime is the magic word. You said it. Next time I say it. Next time you say it. You are really getting annoying, Slime. Now let me down. Slime turned himself itself into a pole, which the boy slid down to the ground. Then part of the pole separated off to form a huge motorbike for Ned. A motorbike made of slime. A slimer -like bike. With a smug smile, Ned sped into Envy's emporium. Brum! Once again, the shop appeared to be empty. Hello? called the boy. Hello? There was silence before. Boo! <gasps> We're going to stop there for today. I hope you have a wonderful day, everyone. And um, I'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Slime. Bye-bye.